So thank you very much for the invitation to present my uh, study in this conference. I would like to introduce you the so-called uh, web of competence uh, theory. So uh, by <coughs> spring uh, 2020, it became clear that COVID-19 pandemic is not only an, a health issue, it also threats the proper functioning of the single market of the European Union. But uh, at first, it seemed that the EU lacks any competence to properly uh, defend uh, the functioning of the single market because uh, adopting constitutional and statutory rules on spe uh, special legal order, hereafter SLO, uh, it is within the competence of the member states. However, uh, one can see tendencies in the regulations of the uh, member states and also they have to uh, have to uh, obey the basic rights guaranteed by the EU, EU law and the case law uh, of the Court of Justice of the European Union. Um, <clears throat> uh, and the rights guaranteed by the uh, Charter of the European Union on fundamental rights may uh, only be invoked when the member states are executing uh, EU law, uh, and this applies uh, to SLO rules as well. Member states uh, typically curtailed two rights as guaranteed by the Charter of the uh, European Union, uh, namely the right to peaceful assembly and the uh, right to uh, freedom of expression. Uh, and every uh, such measures uh, incited uh, heated uh, social, political and legal debates. I would like to uh, talk about the legal debates, for example, uh, regarding the right to uh, peaceful assembly, the German Constitutional Court uh, said that public health issues cannot automatically uh, overrule the right to peaceful assembly. Uh, in every time, uh, proportionality has to be taken into account. Also, the Cypriot uh, legislation was criticized for uh, uh, banning any assemblies where uh, people in great number are present, but the legislation failed to provide an exact number for this great number. Uh, so this was against uh, the principle of legal certainty. And also the Irish and the Dutch uh, legislation uh, granted almost discretionary power to the police to ban any assemblies. Uh, the freedom of expression uh, was restrict, uh, restricted in the name of fight against misinformation uh, because as uh, Joseph Borrell, the high representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs uh, and Security Policy said, uh, misinformation in the time of uh, coronavirus can kill. And accordingly, member states uh, penalized uh, the spreading of misinformation. Uh, uh, However, the European Commission warned the member state that they have to obe uh, obey certain rules uh, and it um, has certain limits. And now let's uh, talk about uh, the scru uh, scrutiny of the uh, European Commission. Uh, for example, the European Commission in March 2020 said that uh, it will pay special attention to the Hungarian SLO rules. Uh, but one uh, month later, in April, uh, Vera Jourova, the Vice President of the European Commission for Values and Transparency, stated that the Hungarian SLO rules introduced in spring uh, 2020 uh, did not infringe on EU law. They were in conformity with EU law. And by the summer of uh, 2020, sorry, I, I was a bit lagging behind with the uh, slides. So, uh, by summer 2020, uh, most member states lifted uh, SLO rules, but some member states, uh, for example Hungary, uh, maintained an elevated level of awareness. And these moderate forms of uh, SLOs were criticized, for example, by the uh, Fundamental Rights Agency of the European Union, uh, because they did not serve legal certainty in certain cases and concealed the ability of governments to govern by decrees. The rules of France, the Netherlands and Hungary were criticized uh, on these uh, grounds. And now let's talk about how the EU handled uh, actually the pandemic situation. Uh, the initial measures of the EU to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic uh, attracted uh, criticism and were labeled as disillusioning uh, by some authors. Uh, also, Euroscepticism was on the rise uh, in these days. It was measured by certain surveys, for example, in Italy and France. Uh, 
because people felt that the EU cannot do anything uh, to help the member states. But it was because the founding treaties tied the hands of the EU and interpreting and in some cases uh, reinterpreting these uh, founding treaties took time for the uh, legal experts of the EU. For example, Article 168 uh, of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union says uh, that union action shall respect the responsibilities of the member states for the uh, definition of their health policy and for the organization of their uh, health services. This uh, is also supported by uh, Article uh, 35 of the Charter. That is to say, uh, these issues belong to the member states. However, uh, the European Union uh, found uh, the solution a bit later, and I have to admit that this expression, the web of competence, is not my invention. I borrowed it from a Western uh, academic. Um, so, Article 114 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union says that the European Union has the competence to adopt measures which have as their object uh, the establishment and functioning of the internal market. And uh, what is even more important, the Court of Justice of the European Union in the so-called tobacco advertisement uh, case stated that these measures might directly or indirectly serve the protection and improvement of human health. And that was the beginning for the uh, European Commission to start acting uh, more efficiently in this uh, field. In the communication of uh, May 2020, uh, the European Commission said that medical equipment and medications are goods within the meaning of the founding treaties. Accordingly, the rules of the single market uh, apply. And thus, member states uh, cannot uh, restrict uh, the export of medical equipment because it contradicts the principle of proportionality and the Commission said that it will handle any cases like this according to this uh, principle. Member states were restricted in restricting the free movement of goods uh, and one may argue that this is the reversion of the traditional approach of the basic rights and exemptions. Uh, Road freight transport was hit severely by the pandemic. Uh, the backdrop ranged from uh, 30 to 50 percent uh, compared to similar months of previous years. And therefore, the European uh, Commission, uh, in its uh, communications on the green lanes, uh, called on the member states to uh, let the transport vehicles pass the borders without any lengthy uh, examination me uh, measures and recommended that road freight uh, industry workers should be considered as uh, essential workers, that is to say, free from any quarantine requirements. The other question was the free movement of the free movement of persons. Uh, it is true that uh, the Schengen uh, Borders Code allows member states to reintroduce border controls for a limited period of time. But in March 2020, the European Commission uh, stated that reintroducing uh, border controls might result in unnecessary con uh, questions on the borders that would cause the virus uh, spread more uh, rapidly because whenever more people are present in a uh, very limited uh, place, uh, virus can spread more rapidly. And also the European Commission um, in its guidance, of, uh, guidance in May 2020 for tourists, uh, travelers, and entrepreneurs um, uh, provided some help, and also it launched its Reopen Europe platform to provide information for European citizens so they can travel uh, across the European Union. But the real game changer uh, on the field of uh, free movement of persons uh, was the Council recommendation of October 2020, uh, in which uh, the European Union introduced the color code system uh, to indicate the level of COVID-19 infection rate and how well the disease is being managed in a particular member state. Uh, it also obliged uh, the member states to provide the necessary information for the uh, European Center for Disease Prevention and Control uh, to determine their COVID-19 classification. It also set the criteria that member states have to take into consideration before imposing uh, restrictions on the free movement of persons and required member states to inform other member states and the Commission if they planned any restrictions uh, in the future in order to help 
coordinating uh, these restrictions. And also the free movement of services uh, faced uh, challenges. Uh, tourism, transport, accommodation, catering, uh, free time activities and culture provided 10% of the EU's GDP before the COVID-19 pandemic. They were all hit uh, severely. And in this field, the Commission had to take into account consumer protection consideration and uh, the interest of the economic uh, operators. For example, the voucher system, which was supported by the uh, European Commission, proved to be a good compromise uh, for both uh, tourists and both for the uh, travel agents. And last but not uh, least, I uh, examined how the uh, EU institutions adapted to the new uh, conditions. Uh, some of the EU institutions, for example, the European Central Bank and the European uh, Court of Auditors, uh, was not really hit by the pandemic situation because their uh, rules of procedure uh, allowed uh, online meetings and uh, written decision making well before the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. For ex uh, on the other hand, for example, the European uh, Council, um, uh, instead of meeting in person, held video calls and instead of uh, issuing the uh, uh, concluding uh, observations of the European Council, uh, for a certain period, uh, the so-called concluding observations of the president were uh, issued. Uh, it, enhanced the then, uh, it enhanced the powers of the then president by circumventing lengthy discussions. And to say the least, the uh, head of the governments were not really happy because of that, because they had less say uh, in the final outcome of the document. Also, the Council of the European uh, Union uh, faced challenges. Uh, for a transitional uh, period, they even delegated the decision-making uh, to the levels of Coreper. Uh, and, um, of course, um, in this case, uh, two uh, governments were not really happy. For example, the Hungarian, the Polish, and the Slovenian government issued a statement that this uh, em uh, empowering uh, for the decision-making is strictly transitional uh, in its nature. And um, the European Parliament, too, uh, faced uh, with the restriction of debates and faced problems with replacing the so-called voting by show of hands. And last but not least, the Court of Justice of the European Union had to uh, postpone trials. And one time it even uh, infringed its own rules of procedure when the new Advocate General in March 2020 was sworn in uh, via electronic communication devices and not in person. And to conclude my uh, thoughts, uh, I think that after an initial uh, period of hesitancy, the EU found its uh, powers to help the member states coordinating uh, the health, uh, coordinating their health uh, system and protecting uh, their economies from the collapse. Of course, there were some criticism. For example, the EU uh, vaccination uh, program was criticized uh, because some thought that it was too slow and ineffective, but by the end of the day, I think the EU did what it was allowed to do based on the founding treaties. Thank you very much for your kind attention.